Okay, well, welcome back. I hope you all managed to have a break from your screen. And we're now going to move on to what for some is always the best part of, of, the, of, the, um, of the conference, when we're going to hear from students. So we've been talking about students and about students learning for the last, for the last few hours. So now we're going to hear from students. So I'm very, very grateful to, to colleagues from Osnabrück University and Porto University who are going to host a student panel and of course to the students from the various partner universities who are participating. So over to you, I can see you Miriam, so thank you very much. Can you please unmute yourself, uh, Sophia and uh, Miriam? Yeah, you can you can start the student panel now. Thank you. Also, all you, all of your participants. Thank you. Thank you. We are just waiting for Liz. Liz will introduce the panel. I have already introduced you. You need to get okay. going. Okay. Okay. Um, We need to wait a little bit for, for Miriam, which she's uh, connecting her. Thank you for your patience. Hello. Hi. I didn't receive the email, so I don't know what happened. But like... Don't worry, just uh, be patient. We just start right now. I think we're already live streaming. <clears throat> yes. Yes. OK. Um, yeah, welcome to this panel session. My name is Miriam Burfeind. I am uh, I'm facilitating this session together with my colleague Sofia Marques da Silva um, and Sara Faria. I hope I pronounced it right. <laughs> um, we are having a small discussion about um, the perspective on lockdown learning from students. And um, we are really happy to have found students that joined us today. Um, the students are Amina, Farina, James, Mariana, and Neil. They're coming from all our partner institutions. Um, and um, we just um, feel like it's important when we talk about I belonging and about inclusiveness, that um, it's important to hear those who we actually try to um, seek out for. So we want to really engage with those who are our students, our main priority in this whole process. And I'm really happy that you're all here. And um, we will start um, with a little introduction, then we will discuss a little bit. And in the end, I um, would like to um, ask all participants to ask questions in the Q&A if you are interested in the perspective from the students or if you want to know anything else. So let's start very easy. Um, I see all your faces, you're happy to be here. Um, to start very easy and just um, tell us very shortly who you are, where you're from and what your role is um, in, as a student, as a mentor. Um, I would like to start with you, Amina, and then go on to Farin. Well, um, I'm Amina Koric. I'm um, 26 years old and I study pedagogical sciences at Erasmus University in Rotterdam. That's in the Netherlands. And um, it's actually my second year as a mentor. Uh, last year I had one mentee, but it was like up, upcoming. So we didn't actually start until like half, uh, half of the school year. And like this year I have two of my own mentees and I have like regular contact with them. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, and I've, I'm having fun and they are too, so it's good. So yeah, that's me. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Farina Migura. I come from, um, from Germany, from University Osnabrück, and I studied to become a vocational teacher. 
Um, yeah, right now I am in my, I think in my second semester being a mentor in this I Belong pro program. And um, the feedback I already received was very, very good. So it is, I think it is very helpful. Presume you're moving on to me now, is it? So my name is James Coyle and I'm from Edge Hill, which is in the United Kingdom. I'm doing teaching, learning and child development and I'm on my second year of the third year course. And I'm a mentor for six first year students. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Mariana. I'm from Portugal. Uh, I am currently studying uh, educational sciences uh, in the University of Porto, uh, and I'm mentor since 2018. Uh, and we um, like always to add, have a relationship, a close relationship with our mentees, and that's what I like most on our men mentoring. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Neil. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Porto, a faculty of uh, psychology and educational sciences. I did a degree, graduated from my degree in educational sciences last year. Marianne is my classmate, so we worked quite closely together and both involved in the mentoring program at the faculty. I have two mentees, even though I've left uh, the university formally, I still have two mentees that I um, continue to follow up with. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you already said like a little impression about um, your feeling of being a mentor. I would like to um, go into that a little deeper and um, ask every one of you to name two or three impressions, emotions or association that you would like to say when I say lockdown learning. What is it that you feel or what you want to say? It's just give us two or three words and then we continue. We're going to take <clears> the same um, line or the same um, um, round order that we did before. So, Amina, you start again, please. Okay, well, the first one, I actually have like positive and negative ones. So, like, it's like unmotivated and unheard. It's because, yeah, do I have to explain them or are we going to do that later? Um, you can uh, um, do that later if you want to. Okay. The next one. Yeah. Unmotivated and unheard, and like the other one is comfortable. So, <laughs> un unheard, unmotivated, and yes. uncomfortable. Uh, comfortable. It's comfortable, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I can I can identify myself with um, with Amina because I also was thinking of the feeling of comfortable, and but a very negative one is the feeling of loneliness, and I would also go for a third one, which could be uh, to be overwhelmed. Again, I, it's, I, this is a bit of a trend. We've all gone for a positive and a negative. So I think a negative is that there has been a lot of isolation and it's been uncomfortable for some. But at the same time, it's been a different learning experience, especially for certain courses where you can explore different digital sides to it. Uh, I also think um, in positive and negative stuff and um, they are challenged struggle but also possibilities and that's it um am i, mute? Am I not muted now uh i think one is missed opportunities um i feel that there were a lot of missed opportunities uh, through the type of learning that we did um disappointment I mean, I'm taking my own words, but also words that I've heard from my ment mentees as well. Uh, disappointment with how things were run. Um, I'm personally for myself excited because there are a lot of think I think new opportunities, a lot of new learning um, that we were able to experiment with. Thank you to all of you. Um, I have felt that it was very impressive to hear those feelings because um, it's hard to get. I try I, before I 
thought about this facilitation. I thought about how do we get into your perspectives? And um, I really like it that you shared um, this part with us. Um, to um, understand it um, and maybe um, why you chose these words, um, I asked you beforehand um, if you want to share a story from your mentor, mentees, from your students, from yourself about um, those feelings or about what you um, experienced during lockdown learning. Um, so if you want to share a story, just share a very short story with us before we start with the discussion, Amina. Um, well, with me, it's like I was looking at the differences between the classes, like the years, the first year, second and third. And I'm like in my last year, so I'm graduating this year. And I, and I see like with the students in the last year that they don't like the schools, they don't really um, like pay attention that much and like they don't really um they do a, a little bit like with the tests and stuff but like most of the times it's you're all on your own and like for the first and second years with them it's like a little bit easier so what i what, what i saw especially with the first and second years is that they had good grades still but not as high as they used to have before covid um, but with the third years they some of them like are completely failing <laughs> because of the situation, because they're like unheard and stuff like that. So that's like kind of the, the difference that I saw between the students in my university and other faculties too, so. Okay, I will continue. Um, as I also am a third year student, I know that I know uh, being at university as a person and I also got to know uh, how it is to yeah to study in distance so i want to i want to more explain the feeling of being overwhelmed because if you go to a uni class in person there are there are tons of students in a seminar that are talking about a special subject and um yes yeah, so there are some uh, some moments where you can lay back and just uh, listen to your students while they were talking and thinking about those things but uh, now in in the distance learning time due to covid you are kind of forced to be focused nearly all the time and do all the tasks that you that you uh, were supposed to do in kind of in the in the seminars, but uh, now you have to do them all by yourself. Yeah, and I think that sort of comes into it because there were some people, sort of what I've heard, where they sort of felt out of the comfort zone or they felt there was too much. And I think one of the main things is like routine. So when you go into university, you know where you sat, you know the room, but when you're at home, possibly in your bedroom or the living room, it's easy to spend that extra hour in bed and you fall behind. And sort of, again, what you were saying, we've been overwhelmed perhaps, where some courses might say, oh, we'll do a bit of placement, but because of COVID, you can't do that and you don't know what's going to happen. So then some people might feel overwhelmed because what they were going to do and what actually happens are two different things. You can't really look ahead three months. You might be looking ahead a few weeks. Um, I, I agree with all that was saying, but uh, last year, as Neil was saying, we and other colleagues, we were on our final year and uh, we feel uh, a little unmotivated also. Uh, but we have the idea to um, developing some night sessions uh, once per week with our colleagues, even though uh, it wasn't uh, in a mentor mentor program. Yeah, uh, we feel like we were um, helping each other uh, by having this interaction we didn't have uh, normally uh, due to COVID nineteen, as we know. Uh, so we. Uh, we do things like uh, listen to music, um, do some funny things. Uh, we talk to each other, uh, also about stuff, uh, about stuff, uh, assignments or tasks we have to do. But also uh, our 
personal and emotional life. And uh, I think it, it was um, pretty um, interesting. And it also uh, it gives us some hope to continue and also gives us uh, some motivation to continue uh, studying and uh, going to college, even online. But yeah, we, we just know we had to be there at Fridays, 9 p.m. <laughs> Yeah, those Friday nights, sometimes it was just me and Mariana and sometimes there were about four or five of us. But one of the things that happened because of these sessions, we realized that people were, were feeling um, uh, that they were defrauded of having a graduation, that there was nothing going to happen to celebrate the end of our course, that it was just going to just evaporate. So Mariana and I had this idea of, well, why don't we arrange a graduation online? So we organized, the two of us organized the graduation online. <clears throat> um, with a guest speaker who, for Portugal, is is a very high quality um, speaker, Antonio Novo, who who was a candidate for president uh, a few years ago, and is a um, uh, ambassador for the United Nations um, for Portugal in Paris. So we, I think, that was something that helped people to feel belonging at the end of of the course. It wasn't specifically. Uh, something that had to do with the mentoring program, but I think just the attitudes of Mariana and myself being mentors and just having this mentor attitude and desire to to help people. Uh, for my mentees, um, they they told me that they feel they felt very frustrated and actually very angry. They're mature students. Um, they even had a teacher that didn't give any classes, just sent some assignments by email. Um, and so those are the things as well that I think went. Uh, completely the other way. So we have some really good positives, but also there's there's some very significant um, negatives. And I have uh, friends who are teachers at other faculties who said that the same things happened with, with their faculties, with some of their colleagues who just didn't. And I think that's where the missed opportunities, that's where the, the idea I have of missed opportunities. Thank you very much. Um, um, I realized that there's like a great um, range of academic, social, and emotion things going on. And um, I want to thank you especially because um, your perspectives are very interesting because you're not only a mentor, you're also students. So you have your own perspective and you'll see your mentees and that's how you relate to that. And um, this is why you are a very interesting um, partners to discuss with. And we're going to keep on with our discussion right now. And I'll ask Sophia to get along with the quotes. Thank you. Thank you. So I will <clears throat> try to share a few slides with you. Um, I think that you all see them, all right. Um, so um, I would like you to have in mind two things while reading this these quotes. These quotes were taken from a focus group discussion uh, within I Belong uh, project. So we collected uh, um, collected this data um, with the first year students, um, and they only know this experience of higher education. So you can imagine how how they were feeling about. Uh, uh, about not missing a lot of other experience as you as you were just saying uh, but I would like you to read these and think um, what what do you think that uh, that this, that you as mentors uh, but also the students that you are mentoring what do you think that you need from your institutions um, uh, also from your peers that are not so involved, for example, in the mentoring uh, programs and other institutions, because the university is not an isolated institution and we might interact with other um, organizations from our cities to, to, to work with us in this. So this, this first quote is, uh, is a, an example um, of how our lives in the, in the classroom uh, was was affected and you can see this was the experience 
uh, in our faculty. So these quotes are from students from educational sciences. And so, and we, we live like this in the first term in our faculty. Uh, and I don't know if the other colleagues here in this panel, if they relate with this, if this was their experience as well, because we usually, our classes are small classes. Uh, so we divide big groups in smaller groups and, uh, and, and the students felt what you already mentioned, isolation, a little bit thinking that they were missing something in their, in their training, in their experience. So this is the first, uh, the first um, uh, quote. Um, the second quote is, well, it's a, it's a, it's a positive, uh, it's a positive uh, uh, um, experience that they have regarding how teachers uh, continue teaching um, during conditions that were not so, um, probably not so interesting in what concerns, you know, like pedagogic uh, strategies. But what this student is saying is, well, it was a little bit different, but they have conversations, discussions. Uh, but as we know, we all in our universities, we have different experiences. Um, the fact that the, the, you know, we are in education, in an educational program, but we might be in, working in other type of institution with other strategies of teaching learning, with, a, with other forms of assignments and different courses have also different challenges. For example, if I need to teach students how to do research, we were missing field work, for example. So we were not having that during classes. So there is a lot of issues that probably uh, are important to address. Um, uh, from, from mentors when you are helping, you know, student, students with different, uh, with different needs. Um, so maybe we could stop uh, here um, after these two sentences and get back, get back to you um, for you to, to discuss a little bit these. So these are different challenges, positive and less positive aspects of the experience. Of course, the online is here as a transversal, um, you know, experience to all of us. Um, what kind of support facing this kind of challenge? What kind of supports do you feel that students and you as mentors uh, need from our institutions, probably from other institutions? What kind of network, for example, network approach do you think you need? And uh, what kind of changes do you think that the mentoring program um, needs to do or did during this uh, during this experience of lockdown and you know online uh, learning? Maybe we could follow the same order, or you know. Um, well, that's a difficult question, but I think um, the first thing that came up in my mind was like. Um, what my mentees also told me, what I feel myself too, is like uh, maybe they can offer more online trainings or whatever. And the, so the possibility that students adjust more to the online learning system because they're so hooked up on the going to school and being physically at school. And now they have to make the big switch from um, schooling all the time, like at being at the universities to being home all the time. And there's not actually has been any training or whatever to allow how to adjust to that. So I think that would be something good, maybe a one day program or whatever, or something they can watch online in their free time. Maybe that's uh, even better so that they don't feel like they have, it's an ob obligation for them to watch it so they can choose it for, for themselves. And um, yeah, I think that's the most important thing for me because my also my mentees told me that um, of course the first, a few things that you um, talk with your mentees is um, how the faculty looks, where you can find everything and stuff like that. And now that's not possible. So the first few months you have to fill them up with something. And the I think the perfect thing to do that is to like make them um, aware of the online learning and how to adjust to that. So I think that's, yeah. Thank you. Um, I would agree with uh, Amina. And another thing that I'll, that come to my mind while reading those uh, 
those quotes from the students. Uh, that reminds me to the mentees we we uh, talked to was that kind of one of the one of a very important thing going to university is to to meet other students and to connect each other to find friends and especially uh, during the studies to become a teacher um, a lot of tasks are group works and during the digital semester it is very it's very hard to find a matching group to work with so um, yeah it is it's well it was and it still is necessary to to try to create groups and try to improve the uh, connecting part between the students more even though it is digital so yeah also the students asked us to to know maybe we can we can arrange a game night or something like that well digital but <laughs> yeah that, so the finding friends and finding other students who are in the same same situation that was one of the one of the things the student asked us to do and yeah which was which i think was very helpful also so of carrying on what you were sort of saying about the communication it is really important that everyone who is a student gets the best communication between their peers because i know a lot of us are second third year students but when you're in the position of a first year student and when you put yourself in those shoes where you didn't know anyone on your course you didn't know how many people were going to be there and then when you match that with online learning where in some cases you might not even see people's faces and it's just a name it is really important then that there are these opportunities where students can voice their own opinions and they're not lost because if you've got 40 50 people it's impossible for a teacher to engage with 50 people. I mean, when you're in a classroom and you've got a teacher going from a teaching experience, the teacher can't say engage with 30 children. So, and that's face to face. So a lecturer can't engage with 50 people online. So it's really important where there are online events where students of whatever age can come all together and meet you meet students of their course and perhaps even other different courses. Uh, I agree with um, all that was said. Um, and uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, we do that stuff at night sessions and, but uh, in our uh, mentoring program, we uh, kind of, we didn't anything uh, sincerely, and I'm kind of regret. But also, we were all unmotivated, and we didn't, we couldn't think on anything uh, to do. Uh, but in the this first semester, uh, we can, uh, we did some sessions uh, that we can uh, have fun or. Um, try to uh, try to not have isolation uh, with uh, our our colleagues and uh, as Farina was saying uh, that part of having friends and uh, having interaction with the, one another uh, that's very important uh, precisely to not have the, the feeling of isolation uh, and we try to um, do that uh, not um, as we liked, but I think that uh, it was kind of hoping and uh, it works for the, there wasn't many students, but uh, the people that were there, they feel um, kind of happy to have conversations with other people, um, ager people than, than them. Uh, and it was very important for me and for our colleagues. Uh, that was very important. Thank you, Mariana. Neil? 
I think there are aspects that for me were important because I, I'm, I'm slightly older than my colleagues, uh, most of them by at least double. Um, and I, I live on my own uh, most of the time. So for me, it was important to have connections and I'm, pre I'm pretty good at connecting. I'm pretty good at keeping connected. Uh, as I said, I already graduated a year ago and I'm still in, in touch with my with my mentees. But my mentees are two mature students that are mothers, they have their they have their children, they have their family, they have their support system. They were friends before, so so they're both connected with each other. So I don't feel that they necessarily needed the support, the emotional support, the social support, although I was constantly asking them, you know, what's going well, what's not going well. Um, and then they're able to share their stories of how disappointed and, as I said before, livid, angry uh, in a couple of contexts. And to be able to share that and then to be able to help them a little bit through that, I think, was was important. For me, I had some good conversations with teachers. I mean, I'm, I'm the same age as uh, around about the same age as a lot of the, a lot of my teachers. So um, I'm very comfortable with uh, equal to equal um, communication. And I think um, that was a very positive aspect where I could actually have get in touch with the teacher and say, can we can we zoom for half an hour um, and work through things? Uh, I mean, there was a point where I was feeling that I wasn't quite holding everything together and needed um, just some encouragement. And so I, I called up one of the teachers and, and got some encouragement. Uh, so they kind of ended up being my mentor a little bit in terms of my um, my emotional needs in terms of uh, of doing the, the class work. But I think one of the highlights, um, one of my highlights, and I think probably for, for Mariana as well, was one of our teachers who's the was the oldest teacher that we had that last year, uh, 2020, for, for our last semester. Um, and she wasn't quite comfortable with the technology. Uh, but Mariana and I helped her in the technical side of things. So we used my Zoom and we did all the technical stuff, stuff and, you know, so she didn't have to worry about that. And she didn't let the, the technology get in the way of the pedagogy. Um, and it worked really well, really, really, really well. But I was hugely surprised by the colleagues that I have who are in their early 20s and how uncomfortable they are with the technology. So even when we, we arranged our uh, Friday night um, meetings, a, a lot of people didn't turn up. A lot of people just not com either not comfortable with the technology, don't like to appear online, uh, kept their cameras off most of the time. And there's just a handful of people then maybe that were missing uh, interaction with colleagues, chatting about things, gossiping about this, or that, this, that, or the other, because nobody at home is in the context that we're in. So some of those, some of those things help as well. Um, this this first quote that Sophia showed, um, I think, is from a student starting starting university this year. So I missed out on the new the new group coming in 2020 uh, 2021 uh, cohort. I missed out on that. So I can see what it's like to walk into a university, have mentors who are available to you now electronically that you can have conversations with, but you don't actually feel that you fit, you don't feel that you belong in the same way that with my mentors, they'd already had a year at the university where they already felt belonging. Uh, Marianne and, I, and ourselves with our colleagues, we felt that we were losing the belonging because we were ending our time, you know, all going our separate ways. So I think what we did was an activity which, which tried to bring that together into a cohesive group so that we could finish feeling part of a group. Thank you, Neil. Um, I think that we don't have time for another round. Um, but I would like to say that from this small discussion, from this small conversation, well, uh, I think that uh, I can speak for Miriam and for Sarah. We are thrilled, you know, just from listening to you. Um, and there, there are a lot of words that you mentioned that's, that will stay with us and that we will we'll reflect uh, uh, about in the in the future and also in I belong project, um, not only the you know the less positive things but also the positive things. Uh, but I think that from what you were saying and uh, and your efforts in keeping your mentees with you, you know, because there there is a great risk of losing students in the way with the, with this. Not only because it's not the online. It's, it's because there is a lot of other issues here at play 
um, while dealing with the same event. Not everybody, you know, uh, experienced this the same way, not only emotionally, but not all, also with other constraints, you know, stop studying because need to help family and to, uh, you know, to, or was, uh, or was healed. So that, that there is a lot of things. And I think that the, the, the mentoring programs are probably one of the first places where things are happening, where you feel that things are happening and there are constraints that, that you need to do things. So uh, I think that so there is this theory, which I think is interesting and fits. And I was thinking about, about it while you were speaking. It's about having students as partners. So, and I'm, think, I, I'm speaking as a, as a teacher. Uh, we need to have students as partners in this process. Uh, we, we can't solve everything by ourselves. I, I could sense from your words that, well, the problem probably it's not, not so much in the academic part, you know, we were delivering classes and we were trying to organize, you know, rooms for group work and everything and try to transfer to the online all the topics, all the Moodle things, all the, you know, I think that we, our efforts as teachers was mainly that. And I think that maybe we relied on students and their peers and mentors to take care of the other parts. Uh, you know, the, the emotional part, the emotional support was, of course, from teachers as well, but we were so busy taking care of the other part. And you also demonstrate students as partners while you were helping, uh, you know, the, your example, helping a teacher that is less, um, you know, has less experience dealing with IT. Um, and well, I think that we learned something. I, I was listening to you. We, and we know all of these, me and Marianne and Sara, we, we know these, but when we listen to you speaking about your experience, we know better. And we realize a lot of things that we are not aware of. Uh, and because we were apart, a little bit more apart this, this year. So uh, now I will uh, pass to, to Miriam to continue. Thank you, Sophia. Um, I think we've got not a lot of time left. Um, and I was wondering if there's any questions from our audience. I'm just checking the Q and A. Um, and I'm not seeing it any, not, not yet. And maybe um, then shortly the questions that um, were um, at our polls, that was the same question our, um, our listeners uh, audience answered. Maybe one of you have an idea. There was a question of how do you get more students into mentoring? So in the online semester, do you have any idea? So how can you as mentors um, motivate students to go to the mentoring classes? Maybe one of you can, don't have to keep the order. If one of you have any idea, just unmute yourself. Be a good mentor. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> if, you're a, if you're a good mentor, you attract new mentors. People want to be mentors as well. That's good. Anyone else? I think that's true what Neil was saying, because like the first year that I was a mentor, I had one mentee and we clicked like so good and I could actually relate to her or she could like we could relate to each other that much that she uh, decided to become a mentor this, the year that I was second. She was the first year mentor. So you actually have a big impact as a mentoring mentee. So I think that's the biggest one. I, yeah. That's good. Anyone else? And when it comes Thanks. down to it as well, you've got to almost oversell. I mean, when you see the next sort of thing of the adverts, like the, the next best thing since sliced bread, you've got to sort of oversell it and sort of say how it can benefit your job or your future career or your CV. And it's really explaining it because some people might think, well, I don't want to be a mentor because I've not got good communication. But do you need to have good communication at the, at the start? because that communication is going to improve whether you have one, six or more students that you're looking after. And I think that's really what it is. You've got to say how it can help and why you as an individual might want to do it when it comes down to it. Thank you. 
Um, I, really, I, I think that's a really good uh, um, last question. And I like the answer of uh, communicate good or well, be a good mentor. And uh, make sure to um, when we had our um, in the in the um, this morning we had a discussion about mentoring as well. And there was like the idea that the mentors have to have the sense of belonging, so to show others that they also belong. And that's I think that's a good idea to uh, end with that. Um, and I think as I can't really see the questions right now, um, I'm sorry that the audience won't be able to ask, but. Um, Anything else? I'm sure you all um, can um, offer to ask if anybody asks questions later on that you can answer them maybe in the chat, maybe to Ivana. So you will stay a little bit. Um, I think some of you, I think Farina, you're going to stay for the next activity as well. And um, I th thank you very much for your insights. Um, I feel like we could discuss more. That's always the same with the things. Um, thank you, Sophia and Sara. And, um, I think I give back to Liz. That's for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's always really good to hear your experiences and um, that there's a lot of commonality there and ar around the challenges and the frustrations. And certainly some of our students were really concerned and frustrated. They hadn't been able to go out on placement. So they were training to be teachers without being able to go out. And James is nodding there. <laughs> I think that was really a really sort of frustrating and, and worrying time around what it would mean for your kind of graduation and, and progression into the teaching profession.